make it a rule, <clears throat> excuse me, never to lie down at night without being able to say, I have made one human being at least a little wiser, a little happier, or a little better this day. Thank you. Call the 25th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Bauman? Here. Berg. Uh, excuse? Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Excuse. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Excuse. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. At this time, I'd ask Boy Scout Troop number 813 to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much, Troop 813. <clears throat> Next we have the approval of the minutes, Vice President Burke. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes be approved as entered on the record. Okay. Motion to second to approve. Any discussion on the minutes? There be a none. Olds and Alderman Segali, do you have your mic on? Uh, yes, I do. I sure yeah. recognizes you. Um, I would like to please um, just announce that Dan Berg, Alderman Berg, is in the hospital, that his eye is very bad and they are keeping him in there, so I'd like to have his constituents know and the other older people know that he is in the hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion on the approval of the minutes? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes stand approved. Resignations, Attorney McLean. <clears throat> There's a letter from Jay Morris uh, advising that uh, due to a change in scheduling, is no longer able to continue serving as a member of the Halpern Water Feature Committee. I ask for a motion to accept and file. Hello. Any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resignation is approved. And a letter to the mayor from Diane Hackbarth uh, advising that. Uh, because she's moving to Sheboygan Falls in April, she uh, tenders her resignation from the Civil Service Commission. Thank you. As for a motion to accept the file. There's a motion to accept the file. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Resignations accepted. And on confirmation, this hereby submit the following <laughs> appointments for your consideration to the Charter Communications Refranchising Advisory Committee. All the person, Dennis Bauman, Susan Hart, mayoral assistant, Carrie Kautzer, director of TV8, Andrew Bubb, citizen, and Timothy Elvis, citizen. All terms shall automatically dissolve upon the execution of a contract between the city and charter communications. That's for a motion to confirm. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? There will be none. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any, I'm sorry. Alderman Stephan, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was just going to ask the city attorney, it, it states that um, they're all approved until the contract with Charter Cable, and I know it, it's very heavily leaned towards Charter reacquiring the contract, but do we have to change that language in case, you know, they don't get the contract, or is that is it okay? Um, are you suggesting if another cable company? I don't know. It just, the statement you read said that the terms end when Charter gets the contract. I know there's a you know large probability they will, but if they don't, do you, is, does that language suffice? I guess is all I'm asking. I, I think so. I guess in the off chance that don't enter a franchise agreement, the, the mayor could come in with some other uh, document indicating that the committee should dissolve or something to that effect. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Appointments are confirmed. Thank you. Public Forum, Madam City Clerk. First on the list is um, Patrick Gillette. Would you please come up to the mic up here, please? And 
And you can move the mic up a bit if you'd like. And then I just need your home address, please. My home address is 915 North Avenue. 915 North Avenue. Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. My name is Patrick Gillette. Mr. Mayor and Common Council, I thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight. I'm here for several reasons. First, I would like to congratulate my opponent, Alderman Manning, on his election. I'd like to thank the 493 people who supported me in this election. I would particularly like to thank a 90-year-old lady in Ward 1 who drove herself to the polls to vote for me. I'd also like to thank a lady from Ward 2 who recently had a stroke and still made it to the polls and voted for me. I was asked to run for City Council by many of these people, and they asked me to do the following if I were elected. Keep the ambulance in the private sector, do not add the cost to the city. Reduce city debt. Require city employees to live within the city. Investigate alternative funding programs for the library. Develop shared service programs regarding the police and the fire department. Find alternative source of funding to build the police department. Reduce city spending. I assure not only the people in District 1 who supported me, but all of the people in all other districts that I do not support increased spending. I have been requested by people throughout the city of Sheboygan to represent them. The people spoke on the referendum issues. No new taxes and reduced spending. That is why tonight I am announcing that this afternoon I filed my declaration of candidacy to run for mayor for the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Jody Thompson. Jody, I need, <coughs> excuse me, I need your home address, please. Uh, 624 Alabama Avenue, Sheboygan. Alabama. Okay, and you have five minutes. Okay. First of all, thank you for uh, hearing me speak tonight. Um, I, my name is Jody Thompson. I'm a voter, taxpayer, teacher, concerned citizen, and one of nearly 40% of the population that is a dog owner. So you can guess what I'm going to talk about. Um, I live near the present site of the dog run, and I walk on the beach daily in all seasons. I'm here to represent some of the 13,000 owners of licensed, do or licensed dogs in Sheboygan. And I'm here to propose that the beach that is currently the dog run remain open to dogs. Um, the current site um, is of great convenience to many of the people in the public who are dog owners. Um, it's centrally located and accessible from several places for parking. Um, it's clean and well maintained by dog owners. There's very little, if any, um, dog waste. The larger issue, issue would be human waste. I've often found broken bottles, cigarette butts, garbage. Um, it's much worse than any dog waste that I've found on the beach. Um, it is a safe place and um, just because of the area it's located in, it's actually very well lit in the evenings, which is very nice for citizens that are out walking there with their dogs. Um, it's also safe for non-dog owners. People who are responsible enough to regularly exercise their dogs are also responsible enough to regularly vaccinate their dogs and also train them to behave in public places. Um, keep in mind, tourists who are dog owners use this facility as well as local dog owners. Um, we've spoken with many tourists who appreciate the beach as is, that they're allowed to bring their dogs there. Um, even non-dog owners like to stop and interact with the dogs at times. There's ample space on this particular beach. It's um, not at all crowded and sometimes totally vacant in fall, winter, and spring. And even in summer, if you go down and look at the beach, aside from the 4th of July, um, there's usually about 50 yards between groups. There's plenty of room. One of the few places, or this is one of the few places that's open um, to dogs here in Sheboygan, one of the few public places, and um, it's very nice. If people do want to avoid dogs, there's a beautiful beach that doesn't permit dogs right across the river, so it's not an inconvenience to people who don't like to be around dogs. Um, <coughs> I'd like to also point out this is a public beach and it's one on which I hope no one business can have claim but something that belongs to the entire public. Um, I, I'm aware there's a proposed site and um, a friend has gone to view it and um, I too have been up there. Uh, too far, it's too far on the south side to be useful to some citizens. The trail is narrow and treacherous and would be even worse in winter. 
Um, water access is limited and may at times be dangerous because of the concrete down there. Um, it's a smaller expanse of beach and will make it more crowded. There's no waste disposal stations at the moment and changing that would result in some taxpayer money. In addition, it's dark, unlit, and unsafe in evenings, which fixing that may also be a taxpayer issue. Um, it is also a popular place for teenagers to hang out and party, which could present uh, some hassle or even danger to people that are trying to walk their dogs there. In conclusion, I'd like you to consider the convenience and safety of the nearly 40% of your voting taxpaying constituency that own dogs and ask that you keep the present location open to dog owners and their pets. And I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the list is Debbie Damelon. Debbie, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, 1704 North 35th Street. North 35th? Yeah. And you will have five minutes. Yeah. Okay, um, since there's a minimum of 13,000 dog owners that pay for the licenses, I'm kind of addressing the same issue, but I'm going to add a little more. I think we should have access to several beaches, including the Blue Harbor area where it is right now. There's a north side area where I think dogs are allowed there, and then the south side area that she visited, it had kind of a sulfur smell. So in other words, it's a place where no one wants to go, and so we just shove the dog owners there, and I think they should have just as much access to nice areas as everyone else. Um, also, if there's just one dog area for dogs to refresh themselves, um, then that presents a concentration of dogs and I, I also like the place where it is right now because you get to interact with other people, not just dog owners. Um, we pay taxes and we pay for dog licenses and we shouldn't be treated as outlaws. I'd also like to repeat the request to allow de leashed dogs in parks so that dog owners can enjoy a walk in nature accompanied by their canine companions. Beloit is a, an example of a dog-friendly town and allows dogs on leash in all of their parks. And it works. You know, I've called there and they say they have no problems. So currently residential areas are permitted for walking dogs, but lawn pesticides cause cancers in dogs, not to mention in their owners as well. So we need access to natural areas and um, originally animals are meant to be in nature, not just people hoarding it all themselves but anyway I thank you <laughs> thank you and let's see last on the list is Dimple Adams <laughs> Dimple can I have your home address please um, 1424 Virginia Avenue, okay. Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thanks, Susan. Um, can you let me know when one minute is up? Sure. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you to the mayor and city attorney and Susan and the council for letting me speak tonight. It's really nice to see you all. Uh, I'd like to um, uh, thank Bill Steffen and Donald um, Van Akron for their service this year and wish them well in their retirement from the council. Mm -hmm. And Marge, we're going to miss you very much. And Dan, and I hope that we see you back in the future. Um, to the rest of you who were reelected last night, uh, Bonnie, Silas, Jean, and um, who am I missing? Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, Manny, he's not here. Uh, congratulations. And to all the new older persons that I hopefully am going to get to know and get to work with, um, I look forward to working with them, which was uh, Mr. Ryan and Mr. Hannah and Ms. Clayunas and I forgot. Mr. Bourne. Pardon? Thank you. Yes, that's right. Mr. Borens, yes. And um, I, I, you know, this week, um, my daughter, uh, my granddaughter, who is a student at South High, got her report card. 
and uh, she showed it to me yesterday afternoon with great pride, I might add. Uh, probably if they show it to their grandmother, it is with great pride. But uh, anyway, she had um, five A's and one B plus. So I was very, very proud of that. And it got me to thinking about the past year and wonder how we would do if we had a report card. You know, at this council is almost coming to an end. And um, so I just kind of like to evaluate a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, the things that I think you might get an A on would be uh, developing the, the um, committee to oversee um, the Blue Harbor situation. Um, I think um, another A that you might get would be when um, you voted to finally have the tasers. It took a fight, but we got them. Another A would be when we went ahead and kept the municipal court that we had voted on some time back. That was another one. And there are a couple more. And then there's some other issues that I think that we could that we could work on. And I know that, you know, with a report card, there's skills involved in getting the kind of grades that my granddaughter got. She has to have good listening skills. She has to have good communication skills. And she has to have good application skills. And I just wonder, you know, how the council would really grade themselves if they look back on the progress from one year ago today. Are we really better off than we were? I don't know. With the headline on the paper yesterday, I'm not sure. Because the big issue then was the police station, and now it looks like it's going to be the big issue again. And I am very, very, very disappointed in that. Uh, I talked with several of you this week, and I know a couple of you said, I don't want to fight anymore. Well, I don't think a good, healthy debate is a fight. I think that's what politics is. If we have 16 people sitting here all agreeing on how everything should be done, I think we'd be in for a big problem. I think it's wonderful that you all come with your ideas and have your own diverse opinions. Four and this is the place where you can iron them out. Can I have one more minute? minutes? You just have, we have one more minute. Okay, again. thank you. And um, so this is what we're going to be looking forward to this year. And I thought, you know, last year we could have, we had a lot of listening sessions. And we're going to be starting some more. Oh, man, did we listen. We had budget sessions. We had listening sessions on where the station ought to be. And you know, I don't think anything got decided according to what the majority of the people came up here and talked to you folks about. Not certainly not where to put the police station. Certainly not on how to handle the budget. Then there was the budget survey that was taken that nobody has seen. I'm not even sure where it is or if we're ever gonna see it or even if it's important. Uh, we also have a, a mayor, which I respect very much, Mayor Perez, I do. Uh, but you always say, why won't you work with me? And I look back at how you appointed your committees last year, and I guess my question with you is why didn't you work with some of the people better? And hopefully you'll keep that in mind this year when you reappoint your committees. I'd like to see that from you. I think I could give you a better grade on that. And um, that's basically about what I've got to say. I think we're going to be revisiting the police issue on where to put it. And I think um, you might want to reconsider where it's going to be. And I think a referendum might be in order for Sheridan Park. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Gillette, Ms. Thompson. Ms. Demelon and Ms. Adams for addressing the council tonight. The next uh, item on the agenda is the election of board and board of water works to commissioners. Uh, Vice President Burke. Yes, I thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloted to continue until one candidate receives the majority. Is there a second to that motion? Second to that motion. Under discussion. 
I would like to place the following names uh, for the position of a member of the Board of Water Commissioners. Second. 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 Okay. Okay. The following: Raymond Hahn, Lloyd Turner, and Tim Nelson. I would also then move to open the floor to see if there are nominations from the floor. Okay, we need to we need to take a vote on the uh, on the motion to to conduct. Okay, okay. Uh, we're we're going to take a vote, um, just a voice vote. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, sir. Thank you. Now I would move to uh, open the floor for uh, to see if there are any nominations from the floor. Second. Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor to add to the three that have been placed on the on, on the floor for nomination? Are there any other nominations from the floor? There are none. Okay. Uh, thank you. And I now move to open the floor to the candidates for this position to speak to the councils for up to three minutes. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. We'd ask, uh, do we have them in order? Um, we can take them the way that he read them, if you would like. Madam Speaker. Alderman Burke. Okay. Mr. Hahn. Mr. Hain, Raymond. Yeah, Raymond Hain. Thank you for this opportunity, and I don't intend to take three minutes. Um, I was contacted by one of the present members of the water commissioners several weeks ago and informed that there was a vacancy coming up uh, and was asked, based on my background, if I would be, uh, if I would be interested in the position. Uh, I will admit, at the time, I didn't know an awful lot about the Board of Water Commissioners. Uh, however, I'm, I'm 58 years old, and I've lived in the city of Sheboygan my entire life, so obviously I've dealt with them an awful lot. Uh, I've spent 30 years of, 37 years of my career working for a local architectural firm as a designer and project manager, and the last two-plus years as a project manager for Quashus Construction Company. So basically, my entire working career, I've been involved in design or construction of buildings. <laughs> In that time, I've had the opportunity to work with the Sheboygan Board of Water Commissioners, work on a regular basis with city planning, city engineering, and city building inspection. So I have a pretty good idea of what their functions are. Um, I've taken the, the liberty of going on to the, water, the Board of Water uh, webpage and pulled up the meetings from the last meetings uh, that they held this year to get a little better feel for what exactly what they do and what's on their agendas. I've also spoke to uh, one of the members on the Board of Water Commissioners to get a little better idea of exactly what it is that, that this group does to make sure that, first of all, I would be a good fit for what they're asking me to do, and secondly, that I would be interested in doing it. And I've been quite surprised and been uh, very interested in exactly what, uh, what they do. Um, I have some past involvement with organizations in the city. I'm a past member of the Sheboygan JCs and uh, chairman of the board. I was with the Sheboygan Area School District Drafting Advisory Committee for over 20 years. I've had multiple terms on the Rehabilitation Center's Board of Directors. Um, and am really looking forward to a, a different opportunity and a chance to work with and serve the people of Sheboygan and return some of the knowledge that I've gained. Thank you. Thank you. That's Mr. Turner. Lloyd Turner in the audience. Uh, Your Honor and City Council, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, you have a position open uh, for water commissioner, and a few weeks ago, you asked that all interested parties send a letter in uh, telling of their interest to, uh, to this position. Uh, I have applied for the position and would like to serve the city in this capacity. Um, I am a registered professional engineer and I have a, um, an extensive background in water utilities. Uh, I served uh, 15 years, a little more than 15 years 
for the village of Germantown, I was in charge of the water utility at that time and uh, learned all facets of the uh, water utility and uh, would like a chance to work uh, for the uh, city of Sheboygan. I, I am a past employee of the uh, city of Sheboygan. I was director of public works for a little over three years before I retired. Um, I'm a very capable and very dependable individual and would consider or would like you to consider me for this position. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Tim Nelson? Hello and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Tim Nelson and I was told to uh, go ahead and give a little bit of background about myself so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I've served as a, uh, well, I used to be a UAW member and uh, this was a few years ago. At that point in time I was an elected union representative. Uh, as at, uh, under those uh, circumstances, I served as chairman of trustee, which uh, was involved in verifying all the books, uh, making sure that every penny that was spent was done so according to the rules and regulations that were allotted by the law and by the constitution of the union that I was involved in. Um, I was also uh, involved for in um, uh, after after that, I was a manager at a department store called Zare's Department Store. I don't know if anybody remembers the, when that existed. It no longer exists, um, but I was an assistant uh, department manager at that point, so I was on both sides of the union fence manager. <laughs> Currently, I'm an x-ray technician at JL French uh, Corporation. Uh, at, at that place, I, I go through the, the parts to make sure there's uh, no un unseen uh, the details that may cause the parts to be defective uh, before they're installed on vehicles. And I am also a, a residential property manager and residential uh, property owner where I, I rent out the properties for uh, uh, apartment buildings. I go through the processes of um, getting uh, contractors, whether they be plumbing, electrical, building, what have you. And uh, I have to follow all the uh, obvious uh, regulations with building inspection that need to be uh, followed through with for uh, staying in line with, with everything that needs to be done in the city of Sheboygan. Um, so I appreciate, uh, appreciate your listening to me ramble on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Right, I move to close nominations. Motion sec second to close nominations. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now we'll conduct the election, Madam City Clerk, City Attorney. Here's the first badge. If you want to take pens, I don't think they have pens or not. Alderman, do you need pens at all, or does everybody have one? Okay. Okay. I think it says Alderman Savalli, your signature, so your full name.
The just 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 the one that got this. the person that has been elected by the common council to serve as the next commissioner of the board of water commissions commissioners is Mr. Ray Hain. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Vice President Berg. We will continue with the agenda, consent agenda. Vice President Berg to accept and file all our roles, accept and adopt all our C's, and put the general order on the passage. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Second, and we've been asked to have 25-13 to lie over until April 17th. And we're holding 25-24 for 25-68. Please make that notation. And then your final one, 25-26, there's a correction there. It should be a substitute general ordinance. Everybody? Alderman Almonds. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. On, uh 2526, which is within the consent agenda, this is the uh, area concerning the change in the area for designated dog walk areas. The substitute resolution is uh, okay with the exception of that I'd like to make a uh, substitute, I'm sorry, a uh, addition to section two. Make an amendment, so we're going to yes, pull it out for a separate vote then. Yes. 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 Okay. Please proceed. Thank you. Under Section 2, where it states, within 13 months after adoption thereof, the Public Works Committee of the Common Council, I'd like to add these words, and the Parks and Forestry Commission shall review and re evaluate the impact of designating the beach area adjacent to Lakeview Park as a dog walk area and its report its findings to the Common Council. That's the only addition I'd like to have made, please. And that is your motion, Alderman? Yes, Is sir. there a second to that motion? Second. second. Any discussion on the amendment? And we will be voting only on 2526, being pulled out for a separate vote. I don't think we have a motion fully for the first motion. Just pass it for the substitute, I don't think. Do you make right. that motion to pass the substitute ordinance and then do yes. the amendment? I apologize. Go ahead. The second. Then, Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion then to uh, pass this. Uh, Ordinance as for the substitute. Uh, to, uh, I can't even speak tonight. I apologize. <laughs> to pass the substitute ordinance as amended. We haven't amended it. No. Have okay. First of all, we, <laughs> we back up just a little bit. We when we pulled it out of the consent agenda. Yes. Let's just get the motion on the floor to pass the substitute ordinance. Just okay, that, first. that first. And then I just need a, just a second for that. For a second. Okay. And then you did the amendment. Yes. So that's where we are right now. Yes. <laughs> on the amendment. <laughs> on the amendment. Yep. Everybody clear? Okay, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm sorry, I go back. Did Alderman Stefan, did you have? Not on, the Not on the amendment, that's what I thought. Okay. Now then, Your Honor, I do make the motion to pass this ordinance as amended. The substitute ordinance. Substitute ordinance as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on that? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to open the floor to the Park and Forestry Commission for their input on this. Um, 
they worked on this for five months and their recommendation has been ignored or taken off the table and I would like to hear from them why they chose a different site and I personally have received um, communications from people that do not want this moved to the south side. They would prefer it to stay at South Beach where it is right now but I guess the fact is they do have to move it because of the uh, future construction and things in that area and it would cost fencing to put around it but I would like to hear from some of the park commissioners as to why they, they chose a different site. Okay, is there a second to open the floor? There's a second to open the floor to members of the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission. Any discussion on that? Alderman Stefan, do you wish to address that issue? No. On the motion to open the floor. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Floor is open. Who would like to address the council from the uh, Board of Parks and Forestry Commission? Mr. Montemayor, please step up, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> this this subject uh, came up on uh, when I, we first got it, it was like June thirtieth of uh, '05. Uh, I think uh, Alderman Ebert first brought it up. Okay, and we worked on this thing for five months. Uh, some of the commissioners worked on this thing very very hard. We knew we couldn't please everybody. Uh, I can tell you this much about uh, the dogs, that there's 60% of the dogs in this city are not registered. Although there's 13,000 dogs registered, just think of how many other dogs are not registered. We had a big problem now, because now we have people walking their dogs in the parks, which is illegal. They also, in the South Pier area, which we are developing, there is no definition or a, a confinement of the dogs unleashed. So the dogs run from Illinois Avenue or from the north part of the pier all the way as far as they can run. There is no barriers until it comes to a natural barrier. There is a small barrier that can be used on High Avenue a little south of that, that's a natural barrier there. After that, the beach starts again, but it runs all the way to the power plant, which includes the Lakeview area. Uh, as we worked on this thing, and we had a lot of citizen input on this thing, a lot, comes a safety factor. And that's where we have to separate the dogs and the humans, especially when they're unleashed. And, and uh, this lady that came up with the, the suggestion that the breed that's left on a beach, she's correct. It's not the responsible dog owners that don't take care of the pet, it's the ones that don't. And they're all over the city. There's dogs running loose at Moose Park, in Park, Evergreen Park, I could go on and on. And evidently, we don't enforce it. I've seen it on Borton Drive, which, where they're supposed to be only. Those, even in that area, they run loose. So as you can see, we got a big problem here. So the first thing we need, we need a fence around where we're going to put this place. But we don't have any money. It'll take about $175,000 to fence the ideal place that we do have, which is the old ash pit on New Jersey Avenue. But we don't have any money, so that's, that's not an option. Uh, after many months of studying this thing, we came up with a solution that the High Avenue area would be the ideal place for it because we have a natural barrier on the south side and we have the bluffs so if you take it that's a 
about 20 feet tall, so the dogs cannot run up that bluff. So we don't need a fence at the south end. We don't need a, we don't need a fence on the west end. What we need is about 30 yards of snow fence to separate the dogs from the public. That would be a very small amount of money. Uh, Mr. Holton and our public support would be very minimal cost. We could do it that way. And that was our recommendation. Uh, it went from our committee, it went back to Public Works. And they decided to move it to the Lakeview area. Uh, I can tell you right now that the Lakeview area right now, we have a bunch of illegal dogs in that area already. There is the people from Black River, all over the county come use that. They come into the park, which is illegal, bringing their dog down to the beach area. I've seen dogs in the, in the park itself. Just bringing the dog into that park is illegal. But it's already been done. The second part of that equation is the bluffs in that area are not high enough. The grade is about like this grade here. You can actually walk down there. There's trails all along the park area, the whole length of that area, that you can actually walk up and down that there. And there's trails all over the place as people. There's also wildlife in the wooded part of that park. And if you turn the dog loose in that beach, you gotta remember what a dog does. It's natural instinct. There's deers turkeys, pheasants, and I could go on and on and on. The dog can right, run right back up there. There's no fence in there whatsoever. The bluff is not big enough to hold that dog without it being leased. Uh, that was our recommendation, it was to use a high avenue because it would be the cheapest way we could do it. Uh, I don't know why the other than some, we're not, we can't make everybody happy. That's for sure. Somebody is going to complain. I have a complaint just having dogs in the parks at my neighborhood because they don't belong there. I think we're encouraging people to break the law by moving this thing to the lake your area. Even if you change the ordinance because you have to protect a while after it's in there. Yeah, if you use, uh, if you fence it, then it would work. But again, you need money. We don't have any money. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner uh, <coughs> Mayor. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Any other member of the commission? Okay. Did anyone? I see two lights here. One light, uh, Alderman Stefan, you don't want to speak on the, uh, this particular amendment here. The ordinance is amended. Does anyone else? Alderman Susha. Thank you. Um, uh, probably about five or five years ago or so, I was in a lot of meetings when they started talking about developing the South Pier. And um, there were a lot of promises, I think, that were made back then. I remember at one meeting we were told that as we develop the South Pier, Sheboygan will become the next Branson. Uh, we were also told that there was going to be um, a bridge connecting both sides of the river, so the shops on the other side of the river would also benefit. And one of the other things that was said at, at some of these meetings is that, you know, some of the things going on there now are going to stay the same, and one of them was that the existing dog run is going to stay there, and that's there for the citizens. And well, I know we didn't become Branson, I don't think the pedestrian bridge will come because it's too expensive, but when you promise the citizens that you're going to leave the dog run there, I think that it was poor planning on behalf of the former aldermen that were in these seats. If you tell people it's going to be there, then you need to budget the $175,000 for the fence or whatever it's going to cost. Um, to now tell the citizens, well, now it's becoming populated, we have pedestrians there, they're going to interact with the dogs, it's a dangerous situation, and we're too cheap to put up the fence, which, you know, we basically promised you you'd always have this place. That's not right, so I'm not going to support moving it. I think it should stay where it's at, and we should be looking at TIF 6 as far as what we can cut. We're gonna approve a budget of $1.4 million. Perhaps there's a little extra in there that we can divert towards this fence. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Berg, did you wish to speak on that? Uh, yes, I'd like to, I guess. <coughs> um, 
maybe as a thought, I think the Fool's Dog Run should be looked at as a beginning rather than an end. Uh, this has certainly been a topic that has been much debated. I think many of the aldermen may remember when we talked about allowing dogs on the lakefront trail. Uh, and uh, uh, that was also a contentious item. Um, I'm reminded when I walk around my block, I can count 19 dogs. If dogs could vote, I'd probably be alderman for life because I happen to think that uh, we need to be more permissive. Uh, uh, as uh, Citizen Montemayor pointed out, my original uh, thought was to let's look at make, making Sheboygan as pet friendly as possible. And I guess I pulled the, that when I wrote it and it says develop a plan that will enhance families' abilities to recreate with their pets and minimize the impact of, on those individuals not wishing contact with such animals. Uh, uh, we have 700 acres of park. There's no place in Sheboygan in our park system where a family can find a park bench and sit with their pet uh, to have a picnic. Uh, there are many cities that have much more permissive uh, attitudes, Beloit, Janesville, Madison, Milwaukee, to name a few. I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is that uh, shortly the uh, uh, Parks and Forestry Commission will be developing a, a master park plan. And I think given this issue, it will be important for those individuals who are pet owners to organize, to come to the table, to again, uh, make their needs known and their desires to have those kinds of protected areas. I think it's also incumbent upon men, the many pet owners to do a number of things. Uh, it's the law that you register your pet. It's important you do that. It gives us an accurate census, and perhaps most importantly, it also funds activities of the Humane Society. Uh, pet owners, I think, can be organized. I think they can. There has been some interest and some effort in fundraising to defray the costs of a dog, a dog run that was fenced in, and I think that this is clearly an issue and an item that won't go away. It will, you know, and I don't think the dog owners particularly are barking up the wrong tree by pursuing this. So I guess for that, uh, I would encourage uh, the dog owners to organize, to uh, come together, and hopefully uh, continue to uh, pester us, if you would, with uh, the issues that, uh, that they have regarding their pets. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. <laughs> okay, would you just... Yes. Alderman Stephan? What are we voting on? I think That's I what I was going to ask the city clerk to. <coughs> city clerk. Um, the last motion we have is to pass the substitute ordinance as amended, and the amendment was to add after public works committee to add the board of park and forestry commissioners. Can we speak? Oh, Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with a lot of things that have been said here tonight. Uh, to quote one of my favorite movies, I think what we have here is a failure to communicate, because I've had people call me and say. You know, nothing against the mayor. Both mayors have said at one time, the dog park's not moving or the dog run's not moving. They've had Mr. Holton, Mr. Beeble tell them the dog park's not moving or the dog run's not moving. And I understand that we could change anything. You know, what we thought 10 years ago might not be what we want today. But I think we, even though the Public Works Committee, the Par Parks and Forestry Committee has spent a lot of time and effort on this, and I, I apologize because I'm, you know, I couldn't be at their meetings at a conflicting committee that met at the same time. I have communicated with email with them and personally with some of them. I don't think we've looked at all the options. I mean, I agree uh, with uh, Mr. Montemayor that I don't think we should have dogs in every park. You know, I don't think that's a good process, but we should have dogs in some park. You know, I've uh, <coughs> checked with Public Works. My idea, or my idea was the last site at Evergreen Park. You know, you've got a natural boundary of the forest of Maywood. You've got a natural boundary of the river. You know, it's very rarely used because every time I drive by, it's chained. No, we can't do that. I question, perhaps we could, the six months that Evergreen Park is closed, we could let dogs in there on a leash. No, too much dog feces, you know, uh, the, the snowmobile trails or the, you know, my God, the last four years, I think they've had about two months total that they could actually ski in there. And yet we should close the park to all these people. You know, I think we have to look for ways, these, the, the moving the dog run wouldn't be so bad if they had other options. If we could communicate with them, here's what else we're going to miss. Might, this might be a little down. Maybe the run isn't quite as good, but we're going to do something over here for you. It goes back to what Alderman Berg said. We need a long-range plan. Perhaps we need people on the Parks and Forestry Committee from the dog concerned group. Okay, maybe that would help, or maybe if they met with that group and, and formulated a plan. You know, I too have walked that beach, and 
hundreds of times, and I can pick up a garbage bag and fill that garbage bag up with human waste a whole lot faster than anybody can fill it up with dog waste in that beach. I mean, sure, there's always going to be owners that aren't responsible, but you know, I, I remember questioning the, Mr. Holton about the Evergreen Park, and it was, you know, the dog feces, the dog feces, and I said, look, in some of you find beer cans, and we don't know a lot of drinking in the park. You know, I think we have to get an attitude that we want to work with these people and find something that, you know, we all think is good. I mean, they are doing, I will give them credit, I talked to Mr. Beeble the other day, they're doing some work at Greenwig Ponds. Again, that's an area where the natural topography, maybe if you just needed a fence along Washington, you could probably get away with something there. But on the other hand, that's where a lot of development's happening, so I don't know long term how well that's going to work. But I do think we need a, a more cohesive plan, and I guess for that reason, I would just move to refer this entire document to the Public Works and Park and Forestry of the new council. A motion and a second to refer to the new council under discussion on the referral. On a roll call. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion. One opposite. Aye. Two nays. <clears throat> okay. Motion passes. Referred. Yep. Okay. We're back to the consent agenda. It, is there anything else? That, Okay, we will call the roll, Madam City Clerk. <clears throat> Bauman, this is for the consent agenda. Aye. Eberg, Aye. Soda, Aye. Davis, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. and Vanderweel. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion passes. Communications and petitions, 25 27 through 2528 to be referred, except 2528 will go to public works, not public protection and safety. Please make that notation. Report of, uh, report of officers 2, 2529 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the senior center supervisor requesting permission to write to the U.S. Department of the Interior to ask if the senior center can do a construction project in the Friends of the Senior Center have agreed to cover the costs of the various remodeling projects. I'm not wearing my glasses, that's what's the problem. <laughs> I lost them. <laughs> Vice President Burke. Yes, sir, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the officer be accepted and that uh, permission be granted to write the, uh, communicate with the appropriate uh, uh, agency in the federal government. Second. Motion to second, under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could I please ask why they have to come to us for permission to go to the U.S. Department of Interior? They're a, uh, they're a department of the city. We have jurisdiction over them. Okay, so they can't do anything without our approval? Is that most of that? the things they can do without our approval. Okay, yes. They do you. have a commission on the agent that they deal with, yes. Thank you. Okay, on the floor, 2529. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2530 to 2537 to be referred, except make a notation on 2531. That will go to Blue Harbor Convention instead of the city plan. Resolutions introduced three. 2538 by Alderman Berg, authorizing, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the intergovernmental cooperative agreement to facilitate purchases of ex accessible voting systems. Vice President Burke. <coughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I move for passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 2539 by Alderman Stephan awarding the sale of $1,400,000 general obligation promissory notes series. 206B, TIF number six, and providing the form for the, of the notes and leaving a tax in connection there with Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Could I please take 2540 also? Please do, sir. That's the, uh, also by me awarding the sale of $3 million in general promissory notes. I would move the resolution be put, resolutions be put upon the passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. <clears throat> um, I would ask that we open the floor to Carol Worth from RBC Dane Rauscher to give a quick synopsis of the summary of the sales for today. 
There's, there's a motion and a second to open the floor. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I have a handout. Uh, actually, there's two handouts dealing with both resolutions. And this handout supplements the resolution that you currently have. Um, the resolution itself uh, references exhibits. And there's three exhibits, B, C, and D, in each resolution that are currently uh, absent in the one that you have. And the reason is because uh, the sale of this is we are borrowing money by issuing general obligation promissory notes. We are selling them in the municipal market. And we're doing that by sending out uh, an official statement, which we prepare to do that. It's a prospectus on the city. And we also uh, prepare this document and other financial information in request of a bond rating from Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. Now, with that, um, we have received confirmation from Moody's Investor Service of the city's AA3 bond rating. And we have received confirmation from Standard & Poor's of the AA minus bond rating. And uh, again, I'll remind you that these are very comparable ratings of both agencies. Uh, one uses uh, numbers next to its AA of 1, 2, and 3. And the other uses the symbol of minus and plus to indicate where you rank within that AA category. The uh, $1.4 million issue is being um, issued to provide funds for TIF-6 projects. And the $3 million issue is uh, providing funds for the city's uh, 2006 uh, capital improvement plan projects. Uh, both of these issues were bid on this morning uh, by each one, coincidentally, was bid, we received six different bids. And uh, that, uh, I'll start with 1.4 million since that's first on your agenda. Um, if you look at um, the second page of the handout, it's referred to as Exhibit B. And this is called a bid tabulation. So it shows you the six firms that we receive bids from. And it also shows you the true interest rate that was bid by each of these firms. And again, it is awarded to the firm that bids the lowest true interest rate. So you can see that on this issue, Robert W. Baird and Company, it's true interest rate of 3.855494%. That was the winning bid. And you can also see the other five firms that bid on this issue. The next ex page is Exhibit C. And this is the actual bid form that is, again, referred to in the resolution from the winning bidder. So you can see that this is a bid form from Robert W. Baird. And it contains, in the middle part, the interest rates and the premium that they bid. And the calculation is the bottom left-hand corner that arrives at that true interest rate of the 3.855%. We take the interest rates that are on this bid form, and it becomes Exhibit D, the next page. We, we take those interest rates and put them together with the principal amounts as to how the city repays that debt, and it produces the debt service schedule. Okay, so you can see this is how the, the principal and interest payments are made through the life of this issue, which will be at the end of 2015. And again, this is for TIF 6 projects. So these three exhibits will now complete your resolution that you have in your packet. So approval of the resolution along with these exhibits awards the sale of these notes to the firm of Robert W. Baird and Company at that interest rate of 3.855494. It locks in that interest rate upon your action. The city receives the money on April 19th, invests that money, and then uses it to pay project costs as they're incurred. The $3 million issue uh, again, I'll take you to the second page, which is the bid tabulation. It shows you that the winning bidder for this issue, the $3 million issue, is UMB Bank out of Kansas City, Missouri. The true interest rate on this issue was a 3.852708. And there are five other bidders. Um, there are some firms that bid both issues, and there are some new uh, bids on each one of these issues. 
So you can see that we just coincidentally ended up with six on, on both. Again, the next exhibit C is the bid form as submitted by UMB Bank. In the center shows the interest rates that they bid, how they bid them against the principal amounts coming due. That information is turned into the calculation on the bottom left-hand corner of the page, and you'll see way at the bottom, it's the true interest rate, the 3.852708. 3 Again, those interest rates in the center of the page become the next Exhibit D. If you look at the last page of the handout, Exhibit D is taking, again, the interest rates on that bid form and applying them to the principal amounts through the years 2015. And that becomes your repayment schedule, your debt service schedule, and also will be used as your tax levy uh, in every budget year until it is repaid. Again, the uh, adoption of this resolution along with this, um, these exhibits uh, will award the sale of the $3 million notes to the UMB Bank, um, and it will also lock in the interest rates. Uh, and once again, so these funds will also be received by the city on April 19th. Are there any questions I can answer? Alderman oh, Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to add that uh, these were unanimously approved by the Finance Committee tonight. We had a little more detail. And also on advice from uh, Rich Gebhardt, I guess we should split them up for separate votes. Okay. For, okay. Okay, so I don't know if you want another motion or... I, I'd ask, please make a, a, a okay, motion. Okay, I would just move that uh, 2539 be put upon its passage. Mm -hmm. Motion to second. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. <clears throat> excuse me. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Van Akron, aye. Vanderweel, aye. and Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that 2540, which is the sale of the $3 million in general promissory notes, be put upon its passage. Okay. Motion the second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. And Eberg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Bear with me and Madam City Clerk, we're going to sign these documents. Twenty five forty one by Alderman Stefan authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of a wireless mesh network. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension of the rules. Is there any objection? Suspension of the rules. There being none, please proceed. I would move that the resolution be passed. Second. There's a motion to second. Put the resolution upon its passage. Any uh, discussion? I see Marge Verholz in here and she'd probably be the expert to explain this to us, so if she could have that opportunity. Okay. And you're not a department head, so motion to open the floor. Oh. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Motion carries. Marjorie, please. Um, this is part of the Homeland Security grant that the fire department is receiving and to connect there, the fire stations with a wireless network. 
we've looked at possibilities and have looked at expanding this to include other city buildings, including Maywood um, Wastewater Treatment Plant, um, the MEG Unit Municipal Service Building. So that's why we expanded it a bit and um, to include all the city buildings. And over half of the amount of, the gr of this proposal is going to be coming from the Homeland Security from the Fire Department. Any questions? Thank you. Motion is on the floor. Any more discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. <coughs> Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. And Serta? 13 eyes. Motion passes. 2542 by Alderman Susha, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of, of the fire department equipment and supplies. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, motion to suspend the rules. It, is there any objection first? Then we proceed. Okay, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second, under discussion. Thank you. Um, I would just like to make a comment that um, when we utilize federal homeland security funds, we are able to waive the competitive bid process, and that's what we're doing in this case. Thank you. <coughs> Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg, Serta, and Davis. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2843, Holman Berg. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd present. also like to take uh, 2844. Uh, Please do. Yes, uh, these are uh, uh, continuing our agreements with uh, our uh, bargaining groups. Uh, this uh, brings the 2.5% raise for 2005 and 2.5% raise for 2006. Uh, uh, for the professional employees group and also for the police supervisors group. Uh, <coughs> uh, very similar to uh, past actions we've taken with other bargaining units. Uh, so I uh, would uh, move for approval. Motion a second. Any discussion? Alderman Susha. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as many of you probably remember, we only budgeted a 1.5% wage increase and this document calls for a 2.5% wage increase. So I'm going to be voting no on this document, um, but I also have a question perhaps Alderman Berg can answer. Um, this is just talking about the wage increase. What is the total package increase um, for these documents? Vice President Berg. I don't have that available. I'm with uh, uh, Mr. Surik Wood in terms of the roll-up. Mr. Surik, would you please come to the front? <clears throat> Thank you. Well, actually, these contracts, it's basically 2.5%. We haven't, there was a very, mostly language changes. Uh, basically, it's just all wages. So, the, uh, you know, we got a $24 million salary budget, and it would be whatever percent of that for the, for the entire group, all, all seven groups, in fact. And we have just settled the other contracts, too. So, they're all similar. And, and uh, remember, these are for, years 2005 and 2006, and we'll be going into negotiations for seven and eight as we speak almost. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> okay, please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Uh, Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. Okay. Ten eyes, three noes. Motion carries. 2545 through 2547 lies over. 2548 through 2552 to be referred. Reported committees five, 2553 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 2554, by the Special Commi Committee on Risk Management, recommending filing documents submitting a claim from Sandra Wimler for the alleged damages of her basement and property due to a cl 
clogged city drain and paying the, the plumber fee in the amount of $94.50 and denying the remainder of the claim and direct the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Alderman Meyer. Motion to accept and adopt. Alderman Meyer. I'm sorry, who? Meyer. Alderman. Alderman Meyer, need a motion to uh, accept and adopt. Motion um, to accept and adopt. Your sec second, under discussion? Who seconded the motion? Who seconded it? Thank you. Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you. Any discussion on that? There being none, please call roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? No. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 12 eyes, one no. Motion carries. 2555 by law and licensing recommended denying beverage operators license application number 2298 and 7013 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Yes, we need to ask. Right, Alderman Recky, would you please ask if the uh, the uh, persons who I don't have their names with me. Hold on. Just is it? Um, hmm? It would be Terry McDaniel and Larry Piggy. Okay, Terry McDaniel, Larry Piggy, are you in the house? No. Yes. Thank you, Alderman Recky. Motion stands. Please call the roll. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2556 by Special Committee on Risk Management recommended filing documents submitting a claim from Linda Torres for alleged damages to her vehicle when a city snow plow went through a stop sign and hit her car and paying the claim in the amount of $4,000. Alderman Meyer. Motion to accept. There's a motion to accept and adopt. Any discussion? And adopt, sorry. There being none, please call the roll. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Radke. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 2557 by Special Committee on Risk Management recommending denying claim from Jane Jaworski for alleged damages to her basement when the sewer backed up due to men working outside and this directing the city attorney to send a notice of disallowance. Alderman Meyer. Motion to accept and adopt. There's a motion to accept and adopt. Second, under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you know, we just approved, uh, the Special Committee on Risk Management approved uh, to pay for damages for a car that was hit by a snowplow, and I appreciate that they didn't tie this person up in the court system. But after looking back over the past year, it seems that whenever we get um, a complaint uh, filed with the city for sewage backup in basements, we tend to always deny them and expect those homeowners to um, take it a step further and hire an attorney and take the city to court to try to get their their money back. Um, in this particular case, it appears that this backup may have even been caused by city workers working outside and we're still denying the claim. So I guess um, I just wanted to make uh, a comment, some advice to the citizens out there that they might want to check their homeowner insurance policy and make sure that they've got the uh, claimer for sewer backup because if everybody had the sewer backup on their homeowner's insurance, then I don't think we'd have as many claims coming in to the city and I think everybody would be happy all around. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Okay. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Sagali? No. 12 ayes, 1 no. <coughs> Motion carries. 2558 by law and licensing recommending filing documents submitting a communication 
from John Michael Color Arts Center requesting permission to relocate their food and wine tents and beer trailer into New York Avenue during the 36th Annual Outdoor Arts Festival in July 15th and 16th. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. There's a motion and second to accept and adopt under discussion. Alderman Segali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at law and licensing, I did vote no on this only because of the fact that they could not tell me about the security that they were going to be having around the perimeter. And I feel that any time that you have alcohol being served in a different area and on the streets, et cetera, that there should be security that would be patrolling the area to make sure that um, who's ever going to be served is you know, um, not giving it to other people, et cetera. And they, they said security would be inside the building, but nothing would be outside. So I would also have to vote against no on this because their security um, arrangement didn't, doesn't seem appropriate for them to be expanding their premise like they would like to. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. May you add, though, that this is a 36th annual. They've had it for 36 years, and they've never, they've never had problems if it ever comes to, to where we do. I'm sorry, oh, please excuse yeah. me, I'm talking. If there ever gets to a point where uh, we, we do, would have problems and uh, the police would bring that to our attention, but this is a 36, it's an institution. I think all of you are familiar with that. Uh, Ms. Agali, do you wish to address council? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mary. This is the first time, and this is the first time anyone is gonna be using the, the festival type of ordinance that we have passed. So this is a whole different perimeter. They have expanded it outward. It's not what they used to have. They've expanded it to the streets and around St. Clements. I think Sue Richards could maybe explain a little bit better as to how they're expanding. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about the whole festival. I think that's a wonderful festival. I'm concerned about the security because we have expanded that premise. That's what I'm concerned about. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Meyer, your light's blinking. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd just like to clear something up. Um, they have a security, um, hired security team that are working inside the building that day. There will be people in the building and outside of the building. The outside of the building will be secured by all of their employees. The, all of the John Michael Kohler Arts Center employees are required to work this event. And that is the reason why, because they do act as a security. And this is a wonderful event. The John Michael Kohler Arts Center is a jewel in our city. People come here just for the Arts Center. And it costs the taxpayers absolutely nothing. This is a nonprofit organization. And this, this festival has been going on. This will be the 36th year. There have been no problems. Even the police department you know, confirmed that. They've never had a problem with this. And there should be no problem um, it, accepting this and having this festival this year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. In the committee, the John Michael Cole Arts Center people did bring in some signs or something that they're going to be posting on the perimeter that people know that they cannot walk past a certain point of this expanded premise. I guess the thing that really excites me is this is the first test of our new streets, uh, street festival ordinance, and then what better place to try it than with an established event for many years. So I don't have a problem with this because it's done under the watchful eye of the police department. Chief Kirk and his people need to come back and, and approve this through the streets festival ordinance that we've put into place. There's a lot of checks and balances that go into this before it's even allowed to happen. Um, and the way it's set up, it may not happen. We don't know, but there's checks and balances to make sure everything is followed properly. So I have no problem with uh, passing this uh, tonight because of the fact that there are many safeguards that the Arts Center has shown to us. Thank you. Alderman Seva. Thank you, Your Honor. I would just ask if um, the city attorney would like to weigh in on this issue, if, if it's an issue of parity that we're going to be um, providing um, approval for this and not anybody else, or just your thoughts on it. Be helpful. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I haven't gone to the Law and Licensing Committee meeting, so I'm not familiar with the specifics of what they're doing. But, uh, you know, we did adopt that uh, uh, ordinance to allow for festivals in the streets under certain conditions. I'm assuming <coughs> they're going to have to comply with that. Um, 
as would anybody else who made an application to conduct a similar festival. So uh, uh, I think each one is going to be reviewed on its merits when it comes into the committee. So I don't see a problem with it. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? There being none. Please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2559, 2564 to be referred. Report of committees 7, 2565 to 2567 to be referred. Report of committees 8 by finance recommending entering into a lease with the Sheboygan Police Benevolent Association for space in their building for use by the Sheboygan County MEG unit with the amendment to the lease agreement to change to 740 square feet. Alderman Stephan. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of committee be accepted and adopted. And I just wanted to notice that and, the amendment just was that. Please add that the resolution be, be passed to? And the substitute resolution be passed as okay. amended. Is there a I just wanted to add that. Oh, okay. Just I'm was going to add that the only change was that the, the square footage was wrong in the original document. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Stefan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just also want to mention that we are taking this document, I believe, together with uh, 2524. I believe that that's what Alderman Stephan meant to also include. It's the same document that went to public protection and safety. Yes. 2524, correct. Okay. And then um, just under further discussion, um, I, I question whether it's right to use taxpayer money um, and be giving it to the Sheboygan Police Benevolent Association. Last week, they came out with political endorsements, and I don't think it's right to take taxpayer money and be giving it to um, what I would almost consider a political action committee. That doesn't seem right. They are looking at receiving about $8,000 from the taxpayers um, within the next year. Um, and also being that the election was yesterday and some of the people that are voting on it tonight, I don't think it's right if they were endorsed by this uh, organization that they vote on this document because of the timing, it just doesn't look right. So. I would ask that those aldermen that receive the endorsement from this group abstain from the vote. Thank you. Uh, Alderman McLean, would you address that, sir? Is there a need to ask the people who were the aldermen who were endorsed by this association to abstain? Uh, I, I wouldn't think so, uh, but you know, anyone that does feel that they've got some conflict, I guess, uh, could raise that to the to the body and request to abstain. But. Uh, this money isn't being given to the uh, Police Benevolent Association. It's a, it's a lease. Uh, the city would be renting this space from that organization. And they, uh, mm -hmm. apparently they've been doing that for a number of years, just on a handshake or verbal understanding. And this uh, will put it in writing so that we've got uh, a written lease agreement. Uh, it's my understanding that, as I say, that this has been the, the MEG unit has been utilizing the space, paying rent for a number of years, so it's nothing new. Okay, thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you. Oh, I was just going to ask, uh, thank you, Your Honor, if uh, Attorney McLean to address that, that, and I guess he has. There would be no reason for anyone to abstain from it, uh, is what you're telling us? I don't believe so. As I say, if, if this was a gift to the Benevolent Association, that would be another matter if it was uh, you know, a loan to them. This is a contract to rent space that's been ongoing for a number of years. Uh, perhaps the amounts uh, are ratcheted up for inflation purposes for over the period of time, but uh, I don't see that there's any significant change in the uh, they're relationship. Not, they're not using taxpayers' money for endorsements. Is is that what you're saying? Is that what the question was to? They're the, using taxpayers' money for endorsements? They weren't using taxpayers' money no. for endorsements, I don't believe. Uh, that's their association fund that they were okay. doing endorsements. Uh, again, this is lease of space. Could lease space from somewhere else if the council wishes to do that, but 
as, again, as I understand, this is the space that's been leased over the years uh, without any sort of formal agreement. This is to, to formalize the, the agreement. Thank, Thank you, you, Alderman Tillotson. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to thank Alderman Susha for bringing this up because it didn't occur to me that, that this could be a conflict. Not of caution, I will abstain from the vote. Alderman Stefan. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't know if I was sleeping during the Finance Committee meeting, but I don't think there's any conflict because the way I read it and understood it, we're not giving him any money, even for rent. This has not been funded. In the past, it was rented from a federal grant. This lease is in existence you know, because we thought, well, we should get it you know, in writing if it gets to the point where the city does have to pay this rent. But it has not yet been paid by the city, and hopefully it won't be in the near future. It's just if we run out of those funds that we're getting from the, I don't know if it was Homeland Security grant or federal government or whatever for the MEG unit, those funds have paid it. There haven't been city funds yet. And the hope is they won't be, but in case they are, we wanted to have a document showing that the lease exists. I think, just, just so that the element know, the council did approve an additional $27,000, $28,000 out of contingency to fund the MEG unit for this year, just so you know. So it's not because the federal funding was dropped, okay? Alderman, okay, we got lots of little lights here. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I was just wondering if I could ask Deputy Chief Shervin if he would like to elaborate on this. I, I was going to, but I wanted the alderman to speak first. He might be able to clarify first. Owen Berg, would you like that to? Was by, uh, request also. Thank you, Vice President Berg. Deputy Chief Sherman, please step up, sir. Uh, just to answer your question, Alderman Su Alderperson Susha brought up that uh, with these political endorsements, those political endorsements were brought up through the Sheboygan Pro Professional Police Officers Association. This is a benevolent association. This is all the police officers. This is supervisors. This is patrol officers. This is detectives. This is administrators. This is a separate, a separate organization. So it's not part of the, uh, or it's uh, a subset of the uh, uh, patrol, patrol organization. This has been something that's been done for about a dozen years. Uh, the, uh, the utilities are essentially paid by the, uh, by the uh, Benevolent Association. The, uh, the amount of money that's uh, utilized and put out for the city, it's an extremely good deal for the, for the city purposes. So it's, it's something that, uh, you know, administratively we would support, but it's, it's two separate organizations. If you notice here it says the Benevolent Association. If you notice in the paper, it would be the Sheboygan Professional Police Officers Association that we're making those political endorsements that, that you're mentioning. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Uh, no, but one question. Vice President Burke. Yes, sir, thank you. Deputy Chief. Uh, Deputy Chief Sherman, I believe that you're a 5013C corporation. You're a nonprofit. I, yes, we are, but as far as being able to quote that uh, number, uh, I wouldn't <laughs> be able to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve that might is. help me out. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, the point being that if they're a nonprofit, any nonprofit can't do any political endorsements. So if, if you have that, uh, that tax exemption, you're, you're really essentially uh, in conflict were you, were you to do any political endorsements, is my understanding. Okay. Thank you, Vice President Burke. Thank you, Deputy Chief. Um, Alderman uh, Van Akron. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, after exp the explanation of the two, uh, two entities being separate, I will vote on it. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. Any further discussion? There be a none. Please call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? No. Okay. 11 eyes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2569 through 2570, lies over. Matters laid over 11, 2458, resolution number 3020506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, and Davis, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 206 budget. Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. 
Motion and second to put resolution upon its passage. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2571 will be referred to the Sheboygan Transit Commission. 2572 will be referred to the Sheboygan Transit Commission. 2573 will be referred to Finance. 2574 will be referred to Sheboygan Transit Commission. Attorney McLean, other matters? 2575 is a claim from Robert Jans for alleged damages to his rental property's exterior door when police officers were investigating a wanted person. And that will be referred to risk management. 2576 is a communication from Great Lakes Commission requesting the city to sponsor their 2006 semi-annual meeting by donating its room fee waiver for Wednesday, May 3, and the AM on Thursday, May 4, 2006. That will be referred to finance. 2577 is a communication from St. Nicholas Hospital requesting permission to sponsor the annual St. Nicholas Hospital Freedom Run on July 4th. And that lies over. 2578 is a resolution granting St. Nicholas Hospital permission to hold the Freedom Run. And that also lies over. 2579 is a communication from Asher Heimerman of Resources of Sheboygan Club thanking Alderperson Berg for his hard work on council and thanking the city clerk and the mayor for providing information about the city for his club. That lies over. 2580 is a communication from Scott Hike of Pro Tour Promotions requesting an additional day to his Great Lakes Watercross Tour to include both Saturday, August 19 and Sunday, August 20. That will be referred to Public Works. 2581 is a <coughs> resume of bids for the 2006 Bituminous Resurfacing Program bid number 2300. That will be referred to Public Works. 2582 is a resolution authorizing entering into a contract for the 2006 bituminous resurfacing program bid number 2300. That also goes to Public Works. 2583 is a report of committee on building use indicating that they met and submitting the police department building and city hall space list summaries from Zimmerman Design Group. And that will be referred to committee of the whole of the new council. 2584 is a committee report by Marina and Harbor Committee recommending that various documents be accepted and placed on file. That lies over. 2585 is a report of officer by the Municipal Board of Canvassers <coughs> reporting on the results of the uh, yesterday's election. That lies over. 2586 is <coughs> submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated February 28th as submitted by Skipper Murray. And that will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee of the New Council. 2587 is an ordinance amending for the calendar year 2005-2006 uh, substitute general ordinance number 141-9798, which adopted the revised City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees. And that lies over. Alderman Bauman. Hey, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a, a point of a reference for any meetings that are being held for the next couple of days. Public Works Committee, which would normally meet tomorrow evening, actually has been moved to Monday the 10th. And that will be held at 6.15 p.m. across the street in the Public Works, Public Works Office Conference Room. Also, I'd like to notify the public, too, that the Cable Franchise Committee, their first meeting will be held on Monday the 10th also at 5 p.m. in the third floor conference room. And we'd ask the council if any other uh, com uh, citizens are um, interested to please attend that meeting. Yes, sir. I'll move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Stand adjourned. <laughs>